events and content to empower our community of 3000 young Hollywood leaders to transform both the internal makeup of the industry and our world at large. And our vision is to make exercising your activist muscle a daily routine. And in that way um, to combat empty activism in Hollywood and kind of give you a sense what we're doing. We want to show you this short video. It's uh, keep in mind, this is pre COVID. So um, we are challenged at the moment to do all of our program uh, digitally, but this will give you a little bit of a sense what we are doing at Yeah. activists known as yeah pushes the stories we tell and the impact of our culture to elevate the state of human rights policy movement building and our climate we are a hub of activism and entertainment a community of thousands of hollywood leaders through events screenings activations and now more than ever digital content we are dedicated to making an impact in our industry and our world it's all about learning how one can use my skills, my superpowers, my access to serve the movement. At Yeah, we believe that every person has the power to create social impact in their work. Together, in coalition with other leaders and experts, we have the power and the ability to amplify change. To all the young entertainment activists out there, we say, fuck yeah. And kind of also why to explain you a little bit why we found ourselves in that kind of intersection of entertainment and in um, and social impact is that we truly believe that everything is composed of storytelling essentially we make our world through storytelling we make sense of the world through stories and explore what makes us human stories create a vision of police possibility they have the power to inspire the power to incite and the power to challenge and so stories really influence culture. And if we want to change culture, we need to change the power who make it. So we are really all about empowering our community, especially of young creatives in the entertainment industry to lead the change and to um, change the industry for the better. And without further ado, I wanna introduce my colleague, Samuel Rubin. So take it away, Sam. Thank you, Tanita. Uh, my name is Samuel Rubin and my pronouns are he, his. Um, I was born and raised in Barcelona. So uh, this presentation is being taught by, by foreigners today and, and Europeans to be even more specific. Uh, but NYU is a global community as well. So I'm glad that um, that's an asset. Uh, I came to uh, LA seven years ago. My father was born here. so. Even though that I have the broken English, I'm fifth generation American and I went to UCLA um, where I studied film and television and I pursued my passion for social impact entertainment. And I'll uh, tell you a little bit more about what happened at uh, UCLA later, but uh, a little bit more about what I've done at Yale. I was the project director for the Hollywood Climate Summit, which some of you at the NYU community might be familiar with because it was presented by NYULA, uh, and I also work on two impact campaigns uh, with uh, the Screen Out documentary and the Can You Hear Us impact campaign, uh, which is the campaign for the I Am Greta documentary on Hulu. Uh, and I added uh, three things that I like, Venn diagrams, because I love when you know different points of view come uh, together. Lisa, because she is awesome, and then hippies, because I'm obsessed with their Siracha flavor. Uh, feel free to add on the chat as well, what is it that you uh, like? And actually, uh, I have a question for you even before we even get that, because what the fuck is uh, social impact? I think that's part of what we are here today trying to learn and how can we integrate it in our business? How can we integrate it uh, in our stories? Uh, so I'm gonna poll you and send you a question. Um, Let's go. I'm going to launch the poll. And we can all answer the following question. And the, the question is the following. How knowledgeable are you about the landscape and process of social impact in the business and entertainment industry? And you might not be knowledgeable at all. Uh, you might have a little bit of knowledge, um, you know, a little bit before today. Uh, maybe beginner skills and you want to learn more today. 
you might be knowledgeable already, or you may even be a professional in the landscape, either as an impact producer or a researcher or working on the nonprofit space. Um, we sh I see a lot of those coming in. And uh, Tanita, if you want, we can analyze them together. And we're going to wait until the one minute to close the poll. 70% uh, sure. have already voted. Uh, what, what do you think so far? I think that so far I see that there is more than half that they have very little knowledge or no knowledge at all, which I think the, the good thing and good takeaway from that is that there is a lot of potential impact today to happen. There's a great opportunity to learn and interact with you guys. So that's very exciting for us. Perfect. Did you vote on the poll? Yeah, so you are the one very knowledgeable one. Yeah, cool. <laughs> we can take that by person out. OK, cool. Awesome. So I'm going to end the poll, and I'm going to get started. Thank you so much, everyone, for participating. Um, I'm, I'm going to share the results. Uh, I'm not sure if, if you were being able to see them before, but the results are 33%, very little knowledge, and then uh, also uh, beginner skills, uh, some of you. OK, so social impact. Uh, the word can be used very lightly nowadays, uh, and we should be mindful about the difference between impact and social impact. Impact can be uh, what happens when Trump grabs Twitter and, well, not anymore, yay, uh, and decides to go on a tweet term. Social impact, especially positive social impact, is a complete different uh, thing. And it's specifically uh, what happens when you adjust your workflow to tackle pressing issues with the goal of creating positive change. Uh, obviously, it can be uh, much more than that. And what I was telling before about me going to UCLA to pursue my passion for social impact entertainment is that that is where I met Tanita. Uh, we uh, ran into each other at the Sparksons Summit which was a place uh, for young country level professionals pursuing a career in the space. Uh, hopefully, we're going to have some of those gatherings coming soon again. Yay. And that's a, that's a kind of a reflection on what impact means. The fact that this event was held, that it was meant to be a working opportunity, and that then Tanita and I had the pleasure to run into each other and now are working on impact minded related projects talk to the importance of how when we measure those impact case stories, um, the results can be very surprising and very tangible. It can be qualitative, they can be quantitative, and we're going to talk about that today. And uh, oops, sorry, uh, go ahead, uh, Tanita. Yeah, and similar to also kind of, you know, this event aspect also at yeah, we believe in kind of building those spaces where we can discuss and unpack systemic issues and build a community of care and support and self-empowerment that ultimately hopefully leads us to action that transform Hollywood for the better. And we do that in providing education, interactive discussions and action items to young professionals because we see them as leaders that will be running the industry in the next five to 10 years. So some of the past events, if you wanna to go to the next slide, Sam, yeah. So here you just see um, an overview of some of the events that we have done in 2019 and 2020. There was an LGBTQIA plus inclusivity panel and workshop at Netflix. We did a Pay Up Hollywood town hall event. And we did, maybe some of you were there, a Hollywood Digital Climate Summit together with NYU and YIT. And kind of just to see what what we, what are we up to today. Um, so we will kind of explain you the current lands, landscape of social impact, and then go into uh, different framework models to look at um, imp um, social impact, and then also kind of um, kind of dig into like how do we even measure that, and how do we pitch and fund um, impact. Um, and please feel free to use the chat and the questions and answers. Uh, I was so happy to 
know about you through the poll because I don't feel like I'm talking alone in the bathroom, you know, to a computer. I feel like there is life, you know, in this virtual room. So it's great uh, to know about you. And uh, it's 27 of us minus me and Tony is 25. So we want to make it the most customized to your needs as possible. And everyone's uh, response for each one of the topics that we're going to talk today is different. So go ahead and ask questions as you have them, and we will also have questions and answers at the end. Um, but I want to go back to the idea of what is social impact. And I think that for a lot of young people today, that relates to what does purpose and profit mean and how do they relate to each other. Um, we are reinventing the, um, so the, the traditional business model, the traditional for-profit model, and we're looking at what role are uh, enterprises and organizations, the stakeholders, even if they are a non-profit, playing as a small business or an entity, uh, and what can they do uh, to manage their impact? Uh, how are they directly or indirectly affecting the earth and their community? Um, so the question is, how can enterprises successfully set goals and manage risk? And if you happen to be a creator, then how can you uh, do that for your storytelling? Uh, and as I said before, no, the, there is a, an emerging trend at being interested in social impact and social change. And part of this is because we are now living through a very defining uh, moment. Uh, the pandemic and coronavirus have exposed tremendous, I mean, they haven't exposed, but they have made one more time even clearer the inequities uh, of this country, especially when it comes to racial inequities and racial justice. And on top of that, uh, the Black Lives Matter movement, which uh, forced pretty much every single company to have to come on the record and reevaluate what are their uh, relationships internally and externally with race and racial justice. So there is a lot of um, reasons why social impact is becoming increasing, increasingly more relevant, and it's a trend. Like, let's think for a second about the Super Bowl commercials this year, how are they going to be, and how they were last year or maybe a couple of years ago. You know? um, and then, um, yeah. Uh, how, what do you think about this, Tanita? And, and it, I love the, the headline, it's corporate pride over, because as a LGBTQ identifying person, that's also something that I always show, no? like when you see and pride everyone and every corporation kind of lining up. Um, what, what, what do you think of, of this landscape? Yeah, um, I, th I think it also leads to question of reactionary versus responsive, you know, just being companies being reactionary for, for example, to Black Lives Matter versus uh, responsive leadership. So also kind of really asking the question, what does it mean to respond? Um, you know, you respond to something you aren't, how can you respond to something you aren't aware of, right? Instead of seeking what we want to see, we need to understand what's really happening. So at yeah, we remind ourselves that this is the kind of leadership that applies to all of us whether we are in junior or senior process positions, and it means to take responsibility for one's role in building a more just and equal society, one we all want to live in and drive in and recognizing that more can be done if we work together. And then in terms of the responsive leadership, there's also the question of how far can impact really go? And, um, so Sam, you can go to the next slide if you want. So this is also um, an interesting framework to say, you know, impact can be industry wide and far reaching beyond that. When creating impact for media, it's important to remember that these efforts are built by engaging people. So to really ask your question, is your purpose to increase awareness or knowledge do you hope to influence attitude, shift opinion, build empowerment, or increase a community self-efficiency? So getting from, from getting individuals who see your media 
to behave in a certain way, to having those behaviors integrated as norms, policies, and shared practices. This is a big challenge also from, you know, direct impacts to cumulative impacts. And, you know, whether your initiative or your mission is to engage, raise awareness, or even go to a further step, change attitudes, mobilization to social change. Yeah, absolutely. And I, uh, we, what we, I, I love the conversation that we were having earlier about um, that those are not mutually exclusive for every project and that they, it, when we think of like how far can our impact go and we will get about measurement and evaluation later, it's about knowing the difference at least between, oh, cool, people are engaging with us, they're liking us, they're coming to us versus, oh, I have tangible evidence and I've set up data collection system to realize that there has been a change in the behavioral pattern of these people and that there is now a mobilization. So it's very interesting. And that's why the landscape is so big, because it can get very technical. It can get very academic and research oriented. And I don't know about the 25 people in the call, but it depends on where are you at, what part are you gonna be more interested in? You might be more interested in the development, social behavioral change communication uh, aspect of the landscape, or maybe more on the social impact entertainment, mainstream uh, entertainment side of it. And that's where Tanita and I uh, are currently working at. We do lean to several directions as uh, time goes by, but when it comes to social impact entertainment, uh, we recognize that it has become its own discipline and very relevant uh, because just as people expect corporations and businesses to reflect what's happening on the streets, we also expect the same of Hollywood and we also see the, the, the entertainment industry as a platform for change. So uh, as it grows more financially lucrative, it forces those creators themselves to rethink how are they developing and distributing those stories. And also it forces the industry themselves to analyze what the pipeline that is letting creators in and what the stories are being told, which is why I love that we have the inclusion rider gift here because it proves once again how Sometimes celebrity power can be used for, you know, equity practices, and that's a good example of um, impact. Uh, what's a good example for you, Tanita, uh, that you would like to uh, mention? So one of my favorite example is Roma, because it's not just such an intimate um, film and beautiful film, but it also goes just far beyond the, the, the film itself and is ongoing in terms of its impact. And in that sense, uh, participant media worked with an advoc advocacy organization, including the National Domestic Worker Alliances, to carry out a campaign to try to create a real social impact by helping secure protections for domestic workers, both in the US and Mexico. And the campaign included to raise awareness of domestic workers, their value and their lack of benefits, as well as publicizing programs that can bolster the economic security of domestic workers who are often excluded from um, loss and um, social security programs. So that's a great example in terms of actually creating real impact that even um, led to uh, change of rights for domestic uh, workers. So what's your favorite example, Sam? Um, yeah, my, I'll get to my favorite example, but I also asked the question on the chat because uh, I would love to hear from all of you as well, if there is a movie or if there is a, a campaign that really uh, connected with you. In my case, that will be human. I'm also gonna drop uh, the links to human in case anyone is interested in learning more about it as I stick to it. But it's a documentary that it's actually available on YouTube. And that's one of the things that I love uh, about the film that is very accessible. And the documentary interviewed more than 2000 people 
all over the world, populated places, uh, remote places, and then it's released three different volumes that touch upon all sorts of issues of the human condition in a very profound and shocking and unbelievable way. And I was very impressed uh, with their community uh, screening release plan because even after seeing the movie for a lot of uh, a lot of times myself on YouTube, I was able to then go watch it with an audience, see the director himself, and be able to carry through the meaning of the film. And it was also released on uh, the United Nations General Assembly. Um, and I hope that those people making decisions there had a similar reaction too, I can only hope. I think it should be required on schools. Um, so, Tanita, I'll send it to you. Yes, and then in terms of impact, as we said, there are two ways you can document your impact and strategy and measure, uh, measurement. And the first one is the theory of change that we will talk about today and the five dimensions of impact. And starting with the theory of change in, um, Sam, you can go to the next slide if you want. In its most tangible form, it's a diagram highlighting processes. And looking at this diagram, it can be pretty intimidating and saying like, what is this? But um, uh, first of all, it's very important that the theory of change needs to be aligned to your initiative or your project or program. And um, most, uh, most importantly, your stated missions. So starting from your desired impact and and work you, you can work your way backward to the inputs and indicators and activities needed to make the change happen in the long term. Um, with that in mind, you know, impact usually takes a few years to happen, which makes it difficult to measure, but it does give us a great foundation to define the outcomes which are within our reach to influence and measure. So in terms of the theory of change, the ingredients that are, um, that are useful to kind of set, set out that theory of change um, are impact, outcomes, outputs, activities, input, and or indicators. And they offer important destinations and guides you, uh, and guides you on what to look for in the journey to ensure you are on the right pathway to find what your ultimate impact is and to be aligned to social change. And it's sort of a foundation for any mission-driven initiative. Thank you, Tanita. Uh, so let's unpack what's inside of a theory of change. Uh, the first step, uh, keeping in mind that we wanna get to the ultimate impact and that we wanna figure out what is our mission and biggest contribution, is to break down what do we want our outcomes and outputs to be to achieve that goal. And the difference, I, I love to um, use uh, an example of a, of a birthday party and, and making like surprising someone. So imagine that we celebrate someone's birthday party and our ultimate impact is to make them very happy. Uh, the outcome will be the, the person's uh, happiness, their mood, you know, and how do we, you know, create a positive experience, make sure that that party is a, a, a success. And then the output will be what we need to deliver in order to accomplish that. So we're going to need a birthday cake, we're going to need decoration, uh, we're going to need uh, the ingredients, you know, again. Uh, so outcomes, what do you want to achieve? What's our goal? We want to achieve a change of uh, mood. No, we want to go, a person might be down and we want them to make them happy. And then the outcome, at the output, what actions or items are you going to contribute to make, to ensure uh, those outcomes and those goals? And then uh, I also want to emphasize that when it comes to coming up with outcomes, we need to be creative and we need to be uh, surprising because no one wants to feel that they are being told someone 
we don't operate well when we are trying to be tired of lesson. And it's important to keep things fun and exciting and uh, provide an element of surprise. So as we keep in mind the issues and the objective, keep in mind the tactics to reinvent yourself and come up with some juicy outcomes. Um, and then uh, in terms of the difference between indicators and activities, uh, the indicators uh, are the inputs and metrics to back your theory of change. So they are your evidence. Uh, if we want to stay uh, consistent with the birthday party example, indicators will be how many people were invited to the party and how many people attended, how many people told us that they had a good time at the party, how many people ate cake, how many people uh, brought a gift. You know, like all of those different indications will back up our data and, and, and are things that if we choose to look for, we can strategically uh, measure. Uh, and activities will be the party itself, even though that the outcome is to cheer up someone and that the output is the decorations and the uh, cake, we do make a distinction in a theory of change between an output and an activity because activities are intended to, me, to be immersive experiences in the case of um, a film campaign no, for uh, the one that I'm currently working on. Uh, for I am Greta, which I'm going to talk about that. Some of the activities that I'm putting together are screenings, workshops, uh, conversations, uh, virtual, virtual gatherings, etc. So I want to use the theory of sense that I'm currently working on uh, for Can You Hear Us? Uh, and I'm going to drop the link uh, to Can You Hear Us if you are interested in uh, checking out the campaign, but that's the campaign for the I Am Greta documentary. And our ultimate impact is to root society in local climate action and sustainable forward thinking uh, that is gener intergenerational, accessible, and intersectional. So that's a very ambitious, big ultimate goal. And to accomplish that, we will have to outline different outcomes which will have different output, different activities in order to be achieved. In the case of uh, this ultimate impact, we are looking at increased climate awareness, which can be create educational materials, create deliverables to allow people to educate themselves more on the matter. Intergenerational allyship, build a connection between uh, very different isolated demographics that need to work together in order to resolve this gigantic issue. And then that brings us to individual and structural change. What decisions, what action items we can implement both individually and collectively towards that goal. And internally in the process of doing that, what do we learn that we can share with our stakeholders, with our partners, so that we leverage the release of that campaign uh, towards the movement and what uh, we all accomplish together. Because that's the very important thing about social impact is that it's always win-win and it's never only for yourself. And it, it, it's good to always want exposure for your campaign, for your initiative, etc. but it has to be rooted in the issues of the community. Uh, so um, with the we talk about the theory of change. Tanita, why don't you review what is the impact management project style, which is like a variation to the theory of change model? Yeah, the impact management project, I would say, is a little bit of a less intimidating framework that you can use also to look at impact. And it, um, it kind of breaks it down into more simple or general components as in, you know, what's the purpose? What outcome is your enterprise contributing to? Who's experiencing these outcomes? How much, the intensity so the, and the duration, as well as the contributions and the risks. For example, the contributions, you know, Sam, Samuel um, earlier mentioned, you know, us meeting. So that was like one of the contributions of, you know, um, actually joining forces and um, combating the, the that, 
um, that change together and um, tackling those issues together. So that was one of the contribution for um, yeah as well. And then another way of looking at impact on a more global and universal level are also the sustainable development goals. Sam, if you want to move to the next slides that really kind of asks us, how can we make sure that our business efforts contribute to wider impact goals? So the 17 sustainable development goals that were set by, United, by the United Nations are a universal call to action that helps us to understand both the positive and negative impacts on people and the planet and help frame impact in terms of the different categories. And as I said, there. are um, 17 uh, different ones that you can see on the next slides. And by classifying um, outcomes into the goals and the accompanying targets and indicators, they can really help uh, companies to measure progress and provide insights into how certain activities uh, contribute or not contribute um, from this global uh, effort. I'm curious to know in the chat, uh, you can just drop a number. Um for one of those sustainable goals that matter to you. Um, go ahead and just go and drop in the chat. Maybe if you care about uh, climate action specifically, uh, that will be number uh, 13. Or if you um, care about reducing inequality. Perfect, so look, Gracie. Emphasize quality education, good. I hope we're delivering that today, Gracie, for your standards. And uh, gender equality. Uh, Christine, thank you. Reduce inequality, very important. Laurie, uh, reduce inequality as well, and sustainable cities and communities. David, uh, climate action and reduce inequality. Sophia, Good health and well being, quality education, Leah Colino, decent work and economic growth and reduction inequality. So that's a good example of how now, because of we just had that collective conversation, we can see that there is a consensus in this room that it's so important to address reduce inequalities. And obviously, I'm sure that we all feel that those 17 goals are very important, but uh, it, it's always good to be able to read the room and know um, what our uh, framework is. And that's what, I'm, what I want to talk about, which is that when you are putting together your theory of change, when you're putting together your impact model management or choosing which ones are the sustainable goals, because we cannot do all of it. Like, we cannot have a company the chase, I'm gonna get all of those 17 and fix the world. That is not gonna happen, I'm sorry. I wish it can, but that there is a word for that and it's called utopia and it's not gonna happen, I think. I mean, I would love to, but it's not. So we have to customize it. We have to scale down, we have to uh, understand internally what are we capable of, what can we speak to, what are we involved with, what the landscape, one of the processes of the theory of change is to create a landscape mapping and to look at all of your connections, open your email, look at all these organizations that are in all of those newsletters or those uh, folks that you have connections with and start saying, okay, this person does that, this person does that and figuring out uh, who are the stakeholders and the players uh, involved in the issue that you want to uh, have an impact on. And then something very important uh, to consider when you are modeling your impact is how do you plan to collect indicators? Because back to the indicators that we were talking as one of the five ingredients of the theory of change, even if you don't go with the theory of change, you're going to need sources. So whether if you call it metrics, sources, indicators, evidence, I, I, it's irrelevant you're gonna need proof, tangible, you know, stories that there is something happening. It's like, if I don't have your numbers on the chat, 
of the issues that you care about? What indicator do I have about what you care about? So you need to determine how are you going to collect data? How are you going to submit evidence into your study? Are you capable of putting together Zoom webinars? Yes, then use the poll, use the comment section. Are you capable of uh, using social media? We're going to get into that. How do you collect data for that? Uh, how can you add value? And that's the also super important thing about choosing the impact model. By choosing the indicator, you're choosing priority. What do you want to focus on? Because you can have a lot of numbers and you can have a lot of indicators, but do they actually add value? And is this what the community that you want to have an impact on? Is this what they are interested in? Is that what they want? So all of that needs to be evaluated, needs to be customized, needs to be personalized. It's not supposed to be a gathering, uh, a few hours, I'm going to put together a quick plan and let go. No, it's supposed to take time and it's supposed to be evolving too. Um, so when you go into the strategic plan and you start implementing some of those things is when you realize, okay, this is the kind of impact that I can have. This is what I can strategically focus my resources, my energy. And when I do so, this is what I can accomplish. These are my contributions. Uh, and then is when you can start finalizing, start finalizing the theory of change. And revision after revision, you're gonna realize, oh, that's my ultimate impact. That's the one thing that I really add value to. So we inundated you with all of the philosophy and all of the excitement behind putting together that type of a strategy, but how do you measure it? How do you evaluate it? Um, how do you deter determine uh, what is happening? So passing it to you, uh, Tanita, but before I do that, uh, we are 40 minutes in, uh, we have a lot of East Coast people, so it's late. Um, I, I want you all to ask any question that you might have, uh, please interact and, and, and not, uh, if there is anything that is not ringing a bell or that you would like to double ask on, no uh, pressure at all, um, go ahead. Tanita. So yeah, what is actually impact measurement? So um, uh, impact measurement refers to the measurement and understanding of the social and environmental outcomes of an enterprise minus what would have happened anyway. So it's really, to look at how socially driven and responsible is this enterprise. As we said earlier, you know, our enterprises are just reactionary in terms of Black Lives Matter, just putting out a message, or are they really aligning um, uh, their impact to the operations and activities in a long-term sense? So are they creating real impact? And um, to how to go about to measure that, um, Sam will give a bit of insight on the next slide. Yeah, um, and, and I want to, so I don't know who on the chat, uh, on the room, saw The Social Dilemma uh, on Netflix. I don't know if anyone saw that film, um, or even if you didn't see that film. Thank you, Sophia, you saw it. I know, I love that. And by the way, fun fact, Exposure Labs is the production company that produced uh, uh, Social Dilemma, and they are the co-production partner with Yeah on Can You Hear Us? So same people of uh, Social Dilemma. And uh, when you watch the film, you kind of think, oh my God, everything that I'm doing is being like itemized and controlled and revised, not even by people, but by algorithms. In our mind, we need to see the people capitaining our decision to kind of understand the metaphor because we cannot believe the actual algorithms are making decisions for us sometimes with, you know, intentions behind that. Um, even with the tools that we have as users, when we are the free user, because we don't pay to use Instagram, we don't pay to use Facebook. We are the product, kind of. No? We are the ones that are submitting the data. Even those tools can be useful for indicators in your impact 
a strategies. And one way to look at it in terms of like, for example, social media is the quality, qualitative versus the quantitative. And, and the, the distinction between will be between a like and a reaction and a retweet and a, and a um, shape versus a comment versus an opinion that is a voice or express um, towards you and about your campaign. And all of this can be measured and, it can, and they can be interpreted. I want to show you, for example, hopefully that works. Uh, we just had now a big meeting at Young Entertainment Activist. Um, and we had a big meeting where we talk about all the things that we want to do for 2021. And so this is an internal document, of course, but we itemize everyone's idea. We say, OK, this person pitched this, this person pitched that. And we start accounting qualitative. How many ideas are internal events? Like, what are their pitch categories? What are their subcategories? What are they about? What is the issue? Internally, will they be belonging to a specific committee? Is any other committee going to be involved? Are they related to something that is done before? Are they industry oriented or activism at large? And when we look at all of those decisions, uh, we can start making quality takeaways and make conclusions. We can say, OK, I think that this is the, the, what's happening here. So I see that there is a question. Um, and, and, and I see that that's a great question from Sophia. Awesome. Uh, I'm going to save that question for later just because it's such a great question. And I think it will die perfect. But that's awesome. Thank you. Feel free to add any questions on the chat. This one is, is going to be for dessert because um, we are getting close to dessert. Uh, so, in terms of how do we collect the data? No? As we start making those decisions, and for example, if we compare it with the social dilemma, uh, we need to talk about ethics and morals and best practices too. And how do we want to collect the data? What do we want to do with it? No? Do we want to just get uh, people's information just for poor voyeurism? Or do we actually have a valid reason to prove some sort of behavior change, and there is a logic behind that. Um, and so I, these are some of the best practices that I follow. And at the same time, I do want to acknowledge that no one here is uh, an angel. Every project supposes different challenges. Uh, and sometimes, for example, involving stakeholders. Sometimes some stakeholders are easier than others. You know, sometimes it's easy to have communication with one stakeholder in one campaign, and then you go to another, and it's a a nightmare. And how do you do that? You know, you you learn from every project that you are on. And when you implement those best practices, you have to be kind to yourself too, in knowing that there is not even yet a social impact career in the university that I'm aware of. Even if there is a lot of academic and, and research about it, this is not something that you do the right way or the wrong way. Sometimes you do all of these best practices and, pardon my language, should happen. So when that happens, you have to understand that. You have to understand the change. You have to keep that in mind, the context. If you had the most amazing, like what my, my documentary had for 2020, we wanted to do 60 campus screenings. Yeah, after the pandemic, I don't think so. You know, like that's what happened. I need to understand that. Um, and therefore, it's important to value things that matter. So when we're talking about the data collection, make significant decisions. If you need to do a survey, choose five questions because people are busy. And I would love to ask you about where were your parents born to see at immigrant trends and children. But look, maybe that's not the relevant thing here, you know? Uh, so, when we're thinking of the case studies and what we report, we have to be tangible and include things that are material. Uh, for example, with the Can You Hear Us campaign, and I can get more into that later, we put in together a take action guides. If you go into the website, you can take a quiz and you can personalize it and take actions and connect with organizations. 
we are only providing actual items that are material that people can actually do and that they are tangible. And we are creating deliverables that are going to give us the metric that we need. So that if we put in together an action item, we need things to be organized in a way that if we separate for categories for you, you don't need to tell me what you are interested in because you are making that choice already. But I need to create that materials and I need to have the deliverables to do so. Uh, and the last uh, three, do not overclaim be transparent and verify the result. And I think that those three are very related. Just be honest. And it's okay because again, uh, sometimes you have the best of your intention and no one shows. Like I'm doing this workshop with the best of my intention. And we started and there were 27 people and now there is 20 people. And that's fine. Five people have things to do. That's okay. It's okay. But I'm not going to overclaim later when I when we do again the poll and maybe there is a percentual difference. I'm not gonna say, oh, we went from less than half to everyone in the room knew about social impact. If the metric doesn't compare, then I cannot overclaim that and I need to be transparent about it and verify it. Uh, so that will be my next polling question. Yay. So I'll uh, I'll go with you and ask you, wait, poll number two. Yeah, perfect. Land poll, awesome. So that will be my question now. So as we talk about how do we measure the impact for today, I would love to know uh, your feedback on that matter because I think that that will be an interesting way to also look at ways to do so. No? So we're going to look now at uh, five people who I do think that there is some sort of shift, like, for example, we did have 25% of people that said uh, that they were not knowledgeable at all. Right now, no one feels in that position. Um, and 57% of the people have voted uh, 61. So we still, I'm still going to allow a few votes, but Drop on the chat as well, what are other ways, other indicators that you think we could use to analyze the success or the impact for today's lecture or for a similar workshop that maybe you want to do? So I will start with examples and Tanita, feel free to help me. This is interactive. So we have the registration number of attendees. That will be one, one indicator. What are some other uh, indicators? Well, we hope some of you will maybe sign up for our newsletter at the end or reach out via email, connect with us via LinkedIn, for example. Amazing. Can I see that on the chat? They don't love the presentation. Great point, Laurie. We will make sure that the presentation, by the way, is sent to all of the uh, attendees. Uh, and we will track that because we use tracking links for those kind of situations. I don't know if you are familiar with Bitly or with uh, any tracking link system, but this is, for example, a very easy way to just create a circling, which is even better for the user because they can be like, oh, I remember it, boom. And then uh, be able to monitor how many people click on it for a specific campaign, et cetera. I'm gonna end the poll. I'm gonna share the results. Uh, do you, let me know if you see them, but that, that's amazing. So 63%, 10 people now say that they are not, that, that they feel that after today's discovery session, they are not. And that's super cool because that made my time today and Tanita's time today very fucking worth it. So thank you so much for, uh, you know, I hope that that's an honest opinion and that you don't feel sorry and just say that to, to tamper the result, but I'll, I'll believe in it. Uh, and no one say that they don't feel like they are not knowledgeable at all, even though that there was 25% that said that at the beginning. So now we have tangible evidence that this had some value and that we uh, did something right today. Yes. Okay. So last portion of our uh, presentation, and feel free to add questions to the chat. 
we have about 39 minutes left, 38. Uh, and we're gonna have a generous time for discussions and I'm happy to stay and answer any questions about yeah and uh, et cetera. But pitch and fund your impact. How can we unlock uh, your potential? The very first thing that I think is very important to keep in mind, and it's related to what we were saying earlier, that we cannot all um, do everything, is who are you? And, and, and whatever that you choose to pursue, who is going to support you and who is going to get behind it? Who is going to uh, be the face of that impact story? Um, coalition building is an art. More than anything else, it requires individuals and groups to be willing to rise above their feelings of, separ of separateness and to actively collaborate in a spirit of mutual understanding, patience, and flexibility. And I love that quote, and I think that quote is super important to keep in mind when you pitch and when you try to fund, because when people come together in coalition and they get behind you is when you get a chance at funding and getting a shot with your project and especially when it comes to impact that type of coalition art is very important because it's going to define the grassroots behind it so questions to consider how do you know who makes the right fit what makes you a right fit do you are you the right person to pursue this uh, project uh, what is your personal connection how are you going to leverage that in your pitch so, Tanita, uh, let's break down some of the main must have for an impactful pitch. Um, we we list ten of them. Yeah, the first one is the elevator pitch, which is you know a thirty to one minute summary of you know your idea or your project or your company, and it's really about if you can get the idea across in a very quick manner that people can understand it, and I think. That's something that needs practicing and is, but it's really worth it that you have that short kind of summary, what, what your idea or your, um, uh, your project or your company is about. It's a little bit like the first five seconds of an, of an advertisement before you click a skip video, a skip ad, <laughs> you know, like people are busy and, and, you know, when they pitch something at you, the first first, first, first impression matters. Uh, and that's why it's very important to try to always keep centers and first at the forefront. Why are you even pitching them anything? What's the problem that you're trying to solve? What's the reason why are you even passionate uh, about that issue? And is there a solution that you're offering that might be also too unique that uh, someone else is not addressing? And in bringing up that solution is when you keep in mind, okay, that solution, that problem and, and that proposal that I have for you is going to be implemented this way, with this impact model, with this outcome, with this input, with this activity. And then also kind of not being shy what you have done so far, what's your progress, you know, that kind of supports um, your idea and where you want to be at. Um, and in, if you know what your audience target is, do they belong to a market? What can you learn about the field that you are trying to implement this, either if it's a, 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 a drama or a, or a docu-series or maybe up something on the content entertainment landscape, or if it's a startup uh, on the technological field, like you need to know what's out there and what needs what the competition kind of, no? Yeah, it's about the competition, you know, what kind of landscape and environment you are at, but also, you know, the competition can also be potential partners. Yeah, and, and, and to that point, and I think that competition, grassroots, social impact can have both, because people can be competitive, competing on what services they can offer to their respective clients, but they can also team up on best practices, and they can also call coalition and get together behind something. And that's good. 
And then most important, um, I think, is always the team. You know, any great idea, any great company is only worth the people that it's made of. And really also kind of being reflective of, am I the right person to tell a story? Am I, do I have the uh, background and the experience and the tools to bring about that change? Uh, and the, even though that, yes, I agree with you, the team is going to be always the most important because it's the people that are there with, to celebrate with. Like, you are my team, Tanita, so <laughs> I know you are my most important thing. But the pitch is not going to come through if you don't ask for what you need. There is no point in you getting in the room. Like, no one is going to be, and, and I, I am 25 years old, and I know this is nice, but if you don't actually tell people, like voice it out loud, what is exactly what you need, like it's very unlikely that they will have the initiative if they are busy entertainment or big funding, if there is a funding expectation or something, or if you expect a million dollars from them. If you want a million dollars from them, you put together a million dollar budget you, you explain in this speech what that million dollar budget will be for, and you ask, can you give me a billion, a million? Don't go from a million to a billion, because that will look good, but um, definitely ask for a million if you need. Uh, so in terms of money, which can be a barrier for a lot of initiative to take fruition sometimes, yes, it definitely can be a barrier, especially when it comes to ideas from underserved communities, uh, take having the resources that they need to serve those communities. But at the same time, uh, there are opportunities for social enterprise impact uh, related, nonprofit related initiatives and different funding models that you need to be able to consider. Like for example, grants, or for example, the possibility of imagine that you are uh, writing a script about eating disorder and you want to, um, you know, finance the film, but you're not in a rush and you want your film to talk about body uh, figures on screen. You can figure out if there is some type of research out there that needs to be done or some foundation that wants to maybe do a film about this topic so that they can push for a campaign as well. There is funding for those initiatives. There is funding. And you need to go to the right people, go to the right foundation who might need content to promote those uh, issues. So what do you need to find out? You need to find out who cares, who gives a shit, uh, who is trying to buy and support your initiative, who, uh, how big is the market that you are targeting, which is very related to the pitch as well. If you don't know it and you make sure that you show that you know it, you also likely not to be able to fundraise what you need in it. Um, and that ties you to your network. If your network is very big and you are great and you have a fantastic follower account, maybe then you are fantastic candidate for a crowdfund strategy. And if you have a lot of corporate connection, you can also explore a sponsorship value if your campaign is aligned with corporations out there that have you don't have to ask for them, can you spare money from me? No, corporations are now uh, budgeting money for social, corporate social responsibility related initiatives. So you have to find out what time of the year do they make those budgeting decisions? Who can be your best connection? Do they have a social impact entertainment department or do they have a corporate social responsibility department? If your, climb, if your initiative is climate related, do they have a sustainability department? So develop those relationships and ask the right question, but don't be afraid to ask the right question. Don't be afraid to have a meeting with someone in a sustainability department and say, do you have funding for this type of initiative? And if so, what time of the year is the best time of the year to ask that question, to pitch an idea? But make sure that when you do ask those questions, you are prepared because if you get the spotlight and they say, yeah, send it to me. And then you're like, oh fuck, I have to do the deck because I had the idea, but I don't have the deck. Then your credibility is on the line. 
Okay. Uh, questions and answers. Uh, I don't know, Tanita, if you can see the question that Sophia uh, asked, but um, yeah, I. Do you wanna do you wanna come in live, uh, uh, Sophia, and kind of ask the question? Because I will also hear your voice, and this is definitely if you wanna participate, feel free. I don't know if people can unmute themselves or anything on a webinar, uh, but definitely I will read your question out loud, uh, Sophia, because I think that I added the, I pressed the answer question live, but I think that means that I'm gonna answer it live. Yeah, Gracie is telling me that they cannot unmute themselves. Yeah, I hate webinars, by the way, but it's all good. It's all good. I love to hear how yeah is involved in the development of films that seek to launch social impact campaigns in tangent with the release of the film. How does YEA work with filmmakers to bring out their social impact team in their films and leverage the project towards making impact? Okay. This is a second truthful question. So I'm gonna answer the first part of the question and then I'll let Tanita uh, chime in on the second part as well. When it comes to uh, how to get involved with social impact campaign. There is several ways of doing that. Quite often, an option might be, it depends on whether it is a, a studio type of project or if it's a big uh, you know, production behind it, or if it's more of an indie production that is having a successful release on Sundance and suddenly you know, gets uh, a purchase for distribution. So it depends on what the backstory and the content is. But a few common denominators are, do you have a relationship with the filmmaker or with the team that needs that social impact entertainment team? Because if you have that, then they can ask you directly. Uh, if you want to look for uh, campaigns in bigger film, well, then this is what I will say. So a lot of big companies, like for example, who, she, who has seen just Mercy from um, uh, with Michael B. Jordan about the Equal Justice Initiative um, with a beautiful film, uh, Just Mercy. But Just Mercy, uh, no, sorry, I wrote that to finally. Uh, just Mercy had, uh, I think, more than a dozen of different production companies involved. And several of those production companies were impact campaign, uh, impact uh, agencies. Sometimes a movie has more than one campaign agency. For example, with I Am Greta, Hulu uh, did not hire Yeah directly to do the campaign for that film. It was Exposure Labs who produced The Social Dilemma, as we mentioned before, that they were looking for a campaign production company to do that campaign because they had a relationship with the filmmaker and they wanted to have a parallel impact campaign that could create a coalition, bringing people beyond the Greta Thunberg scope, bring them in, connect them with their local organizations, and then also use that same platform for other impact films that have youth-led climate-related initiatives. So, in this case, Hulu had, his own, had their own campaign uh, and they hired Picture Motion, who are also partners in the Can You Hear Us campaign, and they are a, an impact agency, if you are not familiar with them, but they do a lot of, um, a lot of campaigns. Uh, if you, because you are not familiar with... The, can you do me a favor, Tanita? Can you drop the link of the the state of the uh, event because uh, there is this big uh, book that is in a PDF format that was presented actually at the event uh, that Tanita and I met and it has a long list of companies and you can always look at those companies and you can always develop relationship with them because if you want to be involved with an impact campaign before you ever 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 expect to be compensated for having your own impact campaign you're gonna have to support other people's impact campaigns. And you're gonna have to attend other impact screenings 
other impact, uh, you know, take action with other stakeholders. And when you experience that, develop a relationship with them, engage with them, because they will be the people that you will also most likely want to engage when you do a campaign. So you want to make sure that you were there and that you showed up. Um, so the second part of the question, Sophia, please feel free uh, to add on the chat if that answers your question. Happy to go into more detail. I would love to hear your voice. Um, Tanita, what do you think about how does YEA work with filmmakers to bring out their social impact teams in film and leverage their projects towards making impact? I know that this is not talking to the agency, but like you as an impact producer, like the yeah, impact aside, how do you do that? I think this also relates to initiatives that we are about to kick off on the February um, in February, which is the pipeline access um, initiatives that provides opportunities for underrepresented um, filmmakers in the industry. And one of the first events that we will have is a pitch summit where you can uh, join, where we'll have a series of workshops and panel panelists with experts um, in the industry where you can really kind of understand what's a good pitch. And um, while, you know, the first entry point is getting into that room, but also once you're in the room, you know, that you really bring in your, your full, um, as also Sam earlier said, that you can bring in your whole experience and your whole individuality to that to, to that room and also pick, uh, pitch your idea in a meaningful uh, manner. So that will be the first kind of event that we will have that will also lead to um, a selected group of people being able to pitch um, their idea to, um, uh, um, to, to those experts and uh, possibly even get development for their idea. And this will be a larger initiatives also with a mentorship program. Yes, if you are interested in uh, the entertainment landscape and this looks good to you, please join. It'll be great. Uh, Bitly, that, yeah, pitches. Other ways that you can be involved with uh, the yeah community uh, are subscribing to our newsletter. You can go to youngentertainmentactivist.com. Uh, um, we are uh, a two year old organization and as we were saying before, like in two years old, you can only accomplish that much because making impact and work is such a long initiative. So we are actually in the middle of um, onboarding a new funding junior board from which Tanita is a member of and that we have another 50. I don't know if you can drop the Hollywood Reporter article, Tanita, so that they can see how fancy and fabulous we are. But if they also want to stay uh, uh, close today with what we're doing, you can follow us on uh, Instagram. Um, and yeah, I want to read what you were saying, Sophia, although it looked like you have to hop up, so please do. But uh, thank you, absolutely. You should definitely reach out. And I'm looking forward to know about your upcoming production. It sounds uh, very interesting, and I will, I have ideas of who I can connect you with already. Uh, if you are, before you hop up, if you are an NYU student, if you are an NYU LA student, young entertainment activist, yeah, Impact currently has a activation hub in progress until May of this year. You can fill out this uh, form, bit.ly, and why you uh, lay hard and complete because we have a climate ambassadors initiative for NYU sustainability related initiative and then a creator for justice initiative. But um, please do not hesitate to ask more questions in the chat if you have them. Uh, I am very thankful. I really want to emphasize again that it's great that. Uh, 65% of you feel like there is some level of, um, I want to look at the polls again. I want to finish again with the, with the poll results. Yeah, 63% ended with the knowledgeable. And then in the first poll, 
that number was 10%. So 53% increase of knowledge, that's great, and that's a fantastic takeaway. So thank you for that flashy animation because of that. Um, any last round of feedback add on the comments? Uh, do we have any any last round of feedback from you, Tanita? Yes, I just wanted to say again, you know, feel free to reach out to us via LinkedIn or social media or, you know, email. We'd love to see some of the faces behind, you know, us joining us today. And it was just a pleasure to, to have you all here today. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Um, this is great. Uh, and I want to read your group guys. That make me happy. Because otherwise I cannot read them if I close. Gabriela says, thank you. I'm an NYU prospective student from Brazil and I'm completely happy with this. Learn a lot. Thank you so much, Gabriela. Please reach out if, if you want to learn more. Uh, David, Willie, this is kind of a specific question. Okay, we're not done here. We have a question. When phrasing a mission statement more specific, obviously, more specific obviously is better in terms of stating goals and impact. But how do you keep it flexible and open for future endeavors and projects? Great question. Because you have to kind of keep it open because it's what we were talking about before. I'm gonna go back to the I'm gonna go back to the uh, uh, previous slide that say yeah. Uh, you kind of have to uh, be open because you don't know if your focus and energy and resources is going to change. So when you, depending on what the need is for, if you, for example, are thinking of goals and impact that you want to do for a campaign that is a one year long campaign, then that's such a duration. If we're talking about an organization, I want to start a coalition that has a steering committee that makes decisions, that goes forward, that live on. There should be consensus in the impact model on how long are you revisiting your mission statement? Because time goes by, and I, I'm a co-founder in Young Entertainment Activist. I may go to the website now, and I may be like, oh my God, this is old. You know? So it's absolutely normal for things to change and that's hundred percent normal. I think it's also important that you just stay true to yourself. For example, you know, we are young entertainment activists. So it's always important to remember, you know, that we are um, passionate about the, the power of storytelling and the impact that it can create, but also leveraging, you know, lung voices giving kind of empowering um, young voices um, to lead the change. And I think that's something that won't be cha won't change you know even if we have i don't know another virus next year or something so i think it's kind of um also defining you know what really drives you um at the end of the day and that's something um depending you know how the world changed you can still um adjust that in the way that you're still doing meaningful and impactful work i totally agree um well uh Thank you for all of those who are staying all the way to the end. Uh, thank you, David, for your question. Um, and for real, you can totally feel free to reach out and ask more specific questions. Uh, you deserve it for staying all the way to the end. Um, and yeah, uh, without any further ado, uh, we're going to proceed and finish the, the webinar today. Um, but in case anyone needs my email as well, by the way, my email is uh, samueladiaimpact.com. Uh, and you can learn both about Young Entertainment Activist by going to youngentertainmentactivist.com. But if you are interested more in what we do professionally for like clients, etc., cetera, like uh, the Greta campaign, you can see the uh, impact side of things. Um, Thank you very much and have a good uh, night um, or good morning to those who are in Brazil and in the uh, And I'm going to proceed to close the Zoom. Yeah, thank you so much for joining us today and have a good night and hopefully see you soon.
Bye. Bye, everyone.